hello, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanna to do a series all about each of the 16 personalities. I did this series a couple years ago on my channel and I think that information is still relevant. So if you're interested in that, I will have that linked below as well as I have a playlist for each of the 16 personality types in the description box. So if you wanna know all the videos that I've ever made that apply to ENFPs, you can check that out in the description box. So this is gonna be an overview of the function, strengths and weaknesses. So if you don't know what a cognitive function is, I'll briefly overview it here. I know a lot of people come from the 16 personalities website and you just know like E versus I, introvert versus extrovert. Um, but actually Myers and Briggs comes from work that Carl Jung did in the 1920s. Um, so he coined what are called cognitive functions and then Myers Briggs was built after the fact. So Carl Jung coined these cognitive functions in the early 1920s and then Myers and Briggs came and kind of put a code down underneath that thing. Um, so you're familiar with the fourth letter, J or P is judging or perceiving function. So actually that's a code for this first column on the left, those are the judging functions, how you make judgments. And the column on the right are the perceiving functions, how you kind of take in information. So your third letter is your judging letter, thinking or feeling. So that's represented by this first column. There are two types of feeling and two types of thinking. Your second letter is your, called your perceiving letter, sensing or intuition. And that's represented by the column on the right. We have two types of sensing and two types of intuition. Now that, those are further broken up by your first letter, introvert and extrovert. So we've got you know, introverted and extroverted feeling, introverted and extroverted thinking. We have introverted and extroverted sensing, introverted and extroverted intuition. So we've kind of worked our way backwards. So you got your fourth letter, your third letter, your second letter, and your first letter. Furthermore, these are actually broken down into pairs, which I'll box here. So in that top left box, introverted feeling and extroverted thinking are direct opposites of each other, and they make kind of a yin-yang pair. They're opposite ends of a spectrum, but kind of complete within itself. Um, so you either have the pair on the top left or the pair on the bottom left. And one of those will probably feel most strongly like you. I don't recommend typing yourself in this way, um, but the tests are frequently wrong. So I do recommend studying the cognitive functions. And I have video deep dives on all of these, like 45 minute deep dives on all of these functions, which will be in the description box. So on that left hand column, you either have the top box or the bottom box. And on the right hand column, you either have the top box and the bottom box. And there's probably certain functions that will call out to you a little bit more. So the tests are pretty frequently wrong. So if you get starting to listen to this and you've just taken an online test, that's totally normal. The tests are very frequently wrong and I recommend studying the cognitive functions. So getting into how the individual will use these, so I want to get make this more practical to the ENFP. So everyone has eight cognitive functions and they're used in very specific ways. Um, so your top four cognitive functions, you're conscious of them and you value them. So you are aware of yourself using them, um, you value them, even if you're not good at them, you do value them. Uh, the bottom four, you don't tend to, as a default, you don't tend to value them and you're not necessarily conscious of them. Um, to break this down even a little bit further, um, I've color coded these green and red. So the green ones, one, two, and five, and six are potential strengths. It's not that they are by default a strength, but if exercised, you have more of a, there's more of a potential of those becoming strengths. Um, the red ones are a probable weakness. So there are some exceptions to this. Like, you know, if you're, you know, in your sixties, for example, a lot of those people are very well-rounded, but if you're in your twenties, there's every likelihood that it's a weakness. So I wanna get just a little bit more nuanced in these top four functions. Um, so your first function tends to be an overused strength. It is who you feel like you are, it's who you're comfortable being, and so you use it all the time. Um, it is the correct tool for the job in many, many cases, but it's not always the correct tool for the job. It's one of those cases where when you have a hammer, you think everything is a nail. Um, so it is a strength, and the vast majority of the time, it is the correct tool for the job, but it's sometimes it can be overused just because it's not the correct tool for every job. Although it is the correct tool for many jobs. Your second function, it's also green, also has the potential to be a strength, but it tends to be underused. Your third function, it's red, and it's a weakness. And the reason it's weakness is it tends to be overused and it tends to be an area where it's kind of like a bratty teenager. Your fourth function, also a weakness, but the reason that it's a weakness is because it's underused. So I wanna get into these, I wanna just zoom in for this video, just the top four functions and get a little bit more nuanced with this. I went through a lot of quotes in previous videos. Um, I just did a loop video, a differentiation video, I'll have those linked, um, all about some quotes from Carl Jung and from Myers and Briggs and from John Beebe and Vanderhoop and all sorts of different people about what they said. So these bullet points are quotes that I've taken and these are predominantly from Carl Jung, a few from Vanderhoop. Um, so your first function is like the general and your second function is like the general's aid. It's like the helper. 
your first function as an ENFP is extroverted. And so extroverted functions give you access to action taking and access to the world. So those are very important. Your second function as an ENFP is introverted. So that gives you reflection and access to self. So introversion and extroversion are not, you know, people and not people. It's a matter of action taking access to the world and reflecting and access to the self. And those are both hugely important. And that's why you need both an access on your first and second functions. Uh, your first function is all about the assertion of the self. It's most differentiated. It plays a very principal role. Um, and it can be kind of a superiority complex, which is not necessarily bad, um, but it's you're good at it and you know you're good at it. Your second function, it lends range and prospect that, you know, it vastly expands your range you're capable of, helps you develop skills, pays large dividends and satisfaction. It adds complexity to the type. If you were just in your first function, it's kind of one dimensional, so it adds complexity. Um, John Beebe calls this the parent function. It's how you can take care of others. It's how you can take care of the child, which is your third function. He calls the third function the child. Um, this function tends to be neglected, but this is hu the huge bang for your buck. It lends so many things. It helps you get rid of one sidedness. Um, so it's hugely important. Your third function, um, this is where, this is probably people's most common weakness. This is the overused weakness. Um, so this function grieves, it violates the conscious standpoint. You know, these two functions are not supposed to be like conscious, like one and two. Um, it cannot be expected to offer deep wisdom. Um, it's called the child, and um, John Beebe talks about it's the immature boy with an endless reliant on the parent, inflated ego, despair, and cowardice, shadowy, remains childish. It's a falsification of the entire personality. It's less adapted to reality and has complexes. Um, and some of these bullet points relate to the fourth function as well. Um, the main thing I wanted to point out with the fourth function is this is, John Beebe calls this the inferiority complex. So it's the opposite. I put four underneath one because they're direct opposites. Um, it's the inferiority complex. So, you know, you are bad at it. This is a weakness, it's a red function. However, the reason that it tends to be an issue is because it's just underused. And although you are bad at it, it's, you're not as bad at it as you think you are. It's really an inferiority complex. It's certainly not a strength, but it's not as bad as people perceive it to be in themselves. Okay, so now I wanna get into how this plays into the ENFP. So ENFP's first function is extroverted intuition, or that's abbreviated NE. So the number one word with extroverted intuition was possibilities. And so ENFPs are so good at seeing the possibilities, seeing new ideas, um, you know, ideation, brainstorming, imagining, um, enthusiasm. They have such a, a radiant and inspiring enthusiasm, which I put here, and they have a nose for like the seed of future promise and certain enterprises. And they're so good at inspiring people. Um, to try new things. I think these are the people who are so game for like new inventions. Um, I've had several any doms in my life who are, you know, are so excited to explore or come visit me in San Francisco. All the any doms were the first ones to come visit me in a new city. Um, they're the ones who are most excited about like self-driving cars or, you know, chat GPT or, you know, crypto or Bitcoin or or just any new inventions. Anytime there's something new on the scene that's non-traditional, they are just on it. And it talks about that they see life as a prison. And so it just, everything seems so mundane and suffocating. And so the way they want out of it is possibilities. You know, they have a new idea. They're very clever. Uh, they said they're uh, stimulated by difficulties. And so anytime that there's, um, you know, this closed room, this everyday mundane life, they think of a possibility to kind of get out of it. So any users are so, ex it's so amazing to have them around. Um, they try all sorts of new possibilities. You know, you'll see them, it said that their life is a, tends to be a succession of projects. So, you know, they might try this project and this job and they try this job and this job. In the same way, they might try a new hobby very regularly. You know, this month they try this and they want to try this and they try this. Maybe they want to try putting gauges in their ears or they try different piercings or they dye their hair or, um, you know, maybe they're the first ones to jump on a new technology or if the new, a new iteration of a phone comes out, you know, they're the first ones to get the new technology. Um, so really just on the nose for, you know, anything that could be promising, you know, they really see the future is exciting. New things are exciting. Change is exciting. They're extremely changeable and extremely adaptable. And they represent the part of society that is excited about change and is excited about the new thing. So for an ENFP, this is your first function. So this is a strength. And the vast majority of the time, this is a strength. I'll get into, once I get to the fourth function, I'll talk about where this 
overused strength where that part comes in. Um, but for right now, I just want to focus on all the positive things that NE brings. So now I want to get into introverted feeling, their second function. And everyone's second function is tends to be an underused strength. It tends to be neglected. But this is really what adds complexity and a two-dimensionality to the type. Um, it tends to be neglected for the reason that it's introverted and you're an extrovert. So you really enjoy extroversion, but this is an introverted function. So it can be kind of uncomfortable to go to, but like we need self and we need world. We need both of those two things. And this really gives a capacity uh, for reflection um, and an access to yourself, to knowing yourself and understanding yourself. Um, so the number one word for introverted feeling was moral or misunderstood. So it's all about an internal processing of its own values and its own convictions. And you know, society says this, but does this make sense to me and my values? Um, you know, a lot of times the introverted feeling, you get a lot of uh, pushing boundaries with gender and seeing like, you know, I am more than my gender. My gender is not a monolith. I have more identity and more complexity than you could box me in with a gender. An introverted feeling as well as introverted thinking, which is not valued by the ENFP, but both of those functions really seek nuance and, you know, kind of, uh, a more in-depth complexity. Uh, with the self and just monoliths, like doesn't want to be put in boxes. So they might question things like, why do women have to shave their legs? Or why can't guys wear dresses? Or, you know, questioning these standards of behavior. TI and FI are both questioning. Why do we have to, you know, why are we doing this? Everyone thinks this is normal, but hasn't anyone thought for themselves? Like, what is really the point of all this? Um, so introverted feeling is sensitive to and critical toward brutality. So there are certain functions that, um, you know, if there are bad things in the world, they might just try to, you know, skim over the top or like, oh, let's just, you know, let's talk about something positive or whatever. But introverted feeling, like if they see something that they think is an injustice, um, you know, they're very critical toward it. TI and FI are both critical toward things that they see as not right. And um, they're kind of sensitive toward the brutality, you know, the things that have wronged the world. So it gives kind of an interesting paradox to the ENFP as well as the INFP because extroverted intuition is very enthusiastic. It's described as a merry, jolly function. Introverted feeling is described as like these depths of feeling, a tendency toward melancholia, you know, a sensitive, sensitive toward the brutality of the world. And it creates this paradox of this joy melancholy paradox. They're kind of both at different times. It's very interesting and it's very outwardly merry and jolly to lots of people. And I've heard lots of ENFPs express to me that, you know, everyone knows me as the happy go lucky person, but they don't know this, like this sadness sometimes that goes on inside or this processing of values that goes on. Um, so they have this inner intensity and the depths of feeling is hidden. So this is introverted feeling is not, oh, outwardly expressive. This is, it's very rare that they express these things. It's very just, you know, placid on the surface. Um, he talked about like still waters run deep. So you don't, you know, it might be these choppy waters, but you don't see it. It's still, it's still on the top, but there's a depth down there. I mean, it's not melancholia all the time, but just a depth of feeling. And then it also, you know, sometimes I've met a lot of FI users who at one point had this depth of melancholia and they kind of had this transformation over time to this depth of joy. That's not, you know, not a shallow joy, but like they felt, they, they described to me that they like fought for it. They're like, you know, all the crap that I went through and all the things that I processed and all the sadness I went through, I feel like I know real joy now. Whereas they're like, some people I feel like don't know a deep joy like I know. And I, a lot of FI users are very spiritual. They feel like it's a divine spiritual experience. They have these values, these convictions, these morals, and it feels like it came from like God or from like a spirit. Like if some people aren't religious, a lot of times though, they feel like there's some connection to a divine piety. Um, and this function tends to be neglected. So this could be watered down a little bit from what I'm describing because it's a second function. It's a neglected function. Um, but a lot of times you get art and there's kind of a double emphasis on art because the first function extroverted intuition is all about the new and the possibilities. And there were definitely quotes in them about them pursuing creativity. Whereas introverted feeling, art finds expression. So it's kind of like a double art with introverted feeling. And it gives kind of a depth to the art. Um, I saw a quote the other day that if words could accurately describe every, I think it was every feeling or every emotion. Um, I can't remember exactly what the quote was, but painting wouldn't exist. And art finds expression to these deep feelings that are kind of hard to describe. And it really uh, gives a depth to that experience. Um, introverted feeling is very individualistic. Um, it wants good for the collective. It doesn't want collective brutality, for example, but it's very individualistic and non-traditional. So again, we have a double non-traditional with NE 
first, non-traditional. And also, introverted feeling, too, is also very individualistic and non-traditional. You know, it's not saying, like, there are some functions that want to go along with, okay, like, women shave their legs, okay, I'll shave my legs. But it's very individualistic, and they're thinking for themselves, you know, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, maybe there's a certain behavior that's not the standard of behavior in my culture, but I don't care. I don't care if it's weird. I've heard a lot of uh, introverted feeling users describe themselves as kind of like alien, or <laughs> they describe themselves as kind of like outcasts. So, you know, they're doing things that are kind, they're very different, very non-traditional. Um, introverted feeling is incredibly idealistic. Um, you know, in introverted feeling and introverted thinking both have high standards of ideals, kind of in different ways. This is how I should be. You know, there's a lot of, you know, guilt. Have I been moral? There's a standard of perfection morally, and it's always looking at how we are falling short from the standard and how we're falling short for the ideal. So it's very critical toward anything that, you know, is, is there an injustice? Is something not fair? Um, making sure, you know, that we're striving for perfection and that our standards are not so low. So yeah, they will seek the fault in themselves, moral law, and they have a high nuance of values and standards of behavior. So introverted feeling for an ENFP tends to be neglected, and this is really where an ENFP becomes kind of a complex character. Um, they really have a tendency to dip, dip into that third function. All the types do. All the types have a tendency to dip into that third function and to skip over the second function. But that second function provides so much nuance, you know, that radiant, inspiring, non-traditional, you know, possibilities and creativity that NE provides. It gathers a depth with introverted feeling. Um, you know, seeking fault in the self, you know, that second function is called the parent function. And parents set, uh, they keep the child accountable, they keep them responsible. And um, in the case of introverted feeling, you know, seeking fault in the self, you know, saying, I need to root out every immorality within myself. And maybe I'll journal every day and I'll journal about my motives every day. And I'll, you know, for this one action, I'll journal, what are all my 20 motives? And some of them are good and some of them are bad. And can I root out all of those motives? And it provides such a depth and a complexity um, to use that second function to teach other people, to parent other people. A lot of times your second function is really where you provide value to the world. And that's how you can teach people because it's not a, it's not your first strength. Sometimes with your first strength, you're so good at it, it's kind of hard to teach it because you're just so naturally good at it. Your second function, you are naturally very skilled at it, but you have to kind of work on that muscle to earn it. And so you can teach people some of those skills about introverted feeling. All these bullet points, introverted feeling, that's what you give to the world and can teach other people. You can teach people how to get into the depths of their feelings. Uh, you can teach people how to, you know, be individualistic. You know, how you can teach people how to parse out their values and what standards of behavior they believe in. And, you know, you can really teach people that type of thing, but you can only teach people that thing if you've gone there before. So it's a really great way for you to parent yourself and hold yourself accountable. It's a way for you to parent others and teach people how to be their own person and have their own identity and how they can explore their own identity. So yeah, it's an incredible function that provides, makes you a lot more multidimensional as opposed to kind of a flat character. Um, that a lot of times can happen if you're too much in your first and third function. So I'll get into that first and third function now. This third function is all about, uh, it's this bratty teenager that thinks it's really great at everything. So all of the words that are typically about extroverted thinking, your third function, I'm going to kind of tweak them in kind of a teenagery way. If these words were applied to a teenager who thinks they know it all, you know. So your first function and your third function are both extroverted. And that's kind of the comfort zone for ENFPs. So that's why you tend to dip into that third function as opposed to your second function. So the word for extroverted thinking is systems. So this is, it's all about external systems. So what are our goals, reaching things on schedule. Now this is your third function. So it's not particularly skilled. You know, you watered this down quite a bit. Um, you know, being the authority, what are our goals? You know, the ROI, reaching things on schedule. Um, being kind of a project manager and coordinating a lot of logistics. Logistics come into play. So it's very outcome focused. Um, and I have arrows here how it gets tweaked a little bit when it's in the third function. So I might just, you know, if it was first or second, I might just talk about outcomes and how it's so good with outcomes. Because it's third, I'm gonna kind of tweak it a little bit to see, you know, how it gets kind of twisted and tainted now that it's in this red zone down here. So it's all about outcomes, but it's to feel valued. TE will get kind of merged with FI. So it's like you're trying to reach into that second function FI, but not quite enough. And so it's merging in this undifferentiated state when these are kind of get molded together, become a problem. Um, so it's, you know, I'm gonna do a lot of outcomes so that people like me 
or so that people respect me or it's doing things and the outcome is not an impersonal outcome. I will get this outcome so that I'm valued or so that I'm liked or so that I'm respected and it becomes this hamster wheel. And when you are too much in your first and third function together, there's not a connection to the self and it's just giving yourself to the external world and to your external projects and losing yourself in its toils. And it's this hamster wheel that you can just never feel valued enough. Your accomplishments have never been enough. No amount of projects, no amount of businesses have ever been satisfying. Because uh, you're not really in touch with yourself and how you really feel about things. So expert thinking likes to be an authority. Um, and so, you know, if you're TE first or TE second, that's a really good thing to get into. But as a TE third, it really, you know, it gets taken as a child. You know, if you think of a child who wants to be very authoritative, the word that'll get thrown around is bossy. And ENFPs as adults, they come off as bossy. They don't come off as authoritative sometimes. Or it comes off... Uh, uh, it comes off a little too strong, you know, like if a teenager was trying to be an authority, you know, there's, <laughs> you know, just a little sloppy. Um, so you need that parent, your second function to come in and parent the third function and say, okay, no, 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 we're not, <laughs> we're not going to bulldoze people or, you know, the stereotypes for ENFPs are not at all like this, uh, this bossiness or whatever, but it really can be the case that you get an ENFP that's in a very business setting and they, you know, they want people to toe the line, very black and white. I think introverted feeling provides a lot of nuance of values. Um, that's not like, this is what an authority has told to me and this is how it is. You know, extroverted thinking in a infantile state can be like that. This is what the authority said, so this is what we need to believe, black and white. Introverted feeling says, you know, there's some nuance to this. Maybe I don't need to boss other people around with these values. They can decide their own values, I'll decide my own values. And you know, maybe there's a lot of gray area. Maybe it's not this group is right and this group is wrong. But if these people are feeling so strongly about it, maybe there is some like in between going on here. Maybe there's some gray area. Um, extrovert thing is a lot about determination. And if they set a goal, they reach it on schedule. Um, but what this can be with t with a TE third is it there's a, can be a lot of workaholism and over committing, especially with extroverted intuition first. They just see so many possibilities and so many projects that this hamster wheel of workaholism and over committing. Um, and what can happen is uh, they want to feel valued, so they say, okay, I'll sign up for all these things, whatever they're doing, all these things for people. But then right at the last minute, FI comes in and says, you know, this is what I really want. I don't really want this. So maybe they'll flake at the last minute. And NE be can be kind of evasive, so there can be kind of this flaky quality this over committing flake cycle that can happen um if it what can happen is it's like you made the decision initially with te and then right at the last minute fi comes in and says they want to do this so it's better to just not be in te and to be in fi and make your decisions with fi in the first place um te as well as fi are a lot about rooting out imperfections in a moral code um so what this can turn into in an infantile way is kind of being judgmental or kind of regulating values. This can be an issue with a blend of TE and FI. It's regulating values and pushing your values onto other people or judging people for not going along with your values. The last thing is TE has a very business-like outlook. Um, so TE third can have a very impersonal professional coldness. Um, extroverted intuition already, we'll talk about this in the fourth function a little bit, but extroverted intuition can really just leave things like they start something and then it talked about that they can be very evasive and leave things apparently without remembrance and so some of the people feel kind of left behind so if you combine this kind of evasive quality with ne with this professional coldness of te um it really feels impersonal and it really kind of feels like you know you're being manipulated or used or a pawn and this is really unlike what great and enfps are Great ENFPs are in this green zone, you know, so much of the time. Um, so this is really just what can happen when you're in that red zone. So now I want to get to the fourth function, introverted sensing. The first few bullet points are what not having enough SI, like what issues that can have if you don't have enough SI. And the bottom three bullet points are what good things SI can provide you. So a lot of times, you know, NE gets so caught up in its projects and its ideas and it's very idea based and it's not oriented around the body at all so they can forget to eat or sleep and so sometimes introverted sensing you know an internal processing of how your body's doing kind of goes by the wayside so it can be really good for them to track things so, you know get a bullet journal and track track your sleep track your water intake or get a fitbit and you can track your sleep or things like that you know start tracking si is very good at tracking um, and making sure that you do these things not when you don't have enough si 
Um, there's a rebellion against obligations, you know, not wanting to be tied down. Any doesn't want to be tied down. SI is actually pretty good at following through on, on obligations and very responsible. Um, so you get kind of this uh, flighty nature. There's not a sense of groundedness. SI can really help people, you know, put down roots um, and have long standing relationships. Um, and so people can count on you. You know, you're there on time, people can count on you, and you have long standing relationships. So yeah, with not enough SI, there's this evasive quality or abandoning people. So that's what, when I say that NE is not the tool for every job, the bad qualities of NE are it can be evasive and it can kind of like abandon people. So I talked about the NE is incredibly clever. Um, and so when they want, if they have a mistake that they want to cover up, there's very skilled at evasiveness or making jokes to evade. Um, and then if they get bored of a project or a place to live or, or, you know, people at the worst case, you know, it's talked about they can just abandon very quickly what they set out on it and apparently without remembrance. Um, so that's kind of, that's at the worst. And for the vast majority of time, extroverted intuition is a very good function. Um, it's a very well-loved function. I think ENFPs are like, by and large, one of the most well-loved types because they are amazing to be around. But these are some of the things that can happen. So what you can do is you can sprinkle in a little SI. The reason that this fourth function is a weakness is because it's underused and you don't need to use it all the time. Like really you wanna be in this green zone. That's who you are. You're an NF, an ENFP. Um, and so you wanna be in that green zone. But you can sprinkle in a little of SI, this fourth function, so that you're not too extroverted. The tendency will always be first and that third function. That extroversion will really pull you. So what you can do is really work on that second function, FI, it's introverted, and sprinkle in some of that fourth function. And that can tip the scales against the one-sidedness. So you're not losing yourself in the toils of the world. You can um, know yourself and your values. Um, so what can, SI can do is, SI is really good at being receptive to things of lasting value, and the word that's used for SI is timeless. Um, so it talked about that extroverted intuition, it sees all these different possibilities, but Myers and Briggs talk about that you want to make sure that you see it through to completion. So you have to pick good projects, so you do that with FI, only pick projects that really align with your values, like you don't want to be hopping from relationship to relationship to relationship or hopping from career to career to career because they talked about these NE users they'll see the seed of future promise so they'll go, okay here's the seed and they'll plant it and they kind of wait a little bit and then they you know maybe they get bored or they see a new possibility to chase after and they leave meanwhile someone else comes up and they you know get the fruits of that labor someone else comes behind and they get the fruits of the labor. And so the NE user, like the ENFP or the ENTP, for example, they just start all this stuff, but then they don't get any of the reward for their labor. It takes this kind of the longstanding relationship and the longevity to really get the rewards of it. I think of there's some uh, ISJ teachers I used to teach with, and they have so, such a legacy at the school. You know, they've been there for 30 years, and there are students upon students coming back to visit them every year, and they have such a reputation. Uh, meanwhile, you know, some NE teachers, they were there for a little bit, but then they go away. And so they don't get the, they don't get the reward of all of their hard work for any of the careers because they're just hopping around so much, you know. FI will help you figure out, what do I really want? You know, what are the things that I really value? Um, and just focusing on that. And SI gives you some longevity to that thing so that you can get reward for all these amazing like things that you've thought up. Um, so it'll help you figure out what things are really timeless. You know, some of these things, you know, you've got Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, self-driving cars, chat GPT. Some of these are of long-standing value. They're kind of like timeless. Not timeless for all time, but maybe for while you're here, they have long-standing value. And some of these technologies have just kind of gone by the wayside, you know. So SI has kind of a nose for things, which one are gonna be of lasting value and receptive, and that'll help you pick which projects when you think of uh, a timeless quality. Um, SI will give you some like routine, some warmth and some coziness to really help you, you know, settle into like how much water you should drink, when should you go to bed, uh, what type of blankets do you like? Uh, what's a good meal plan for you? Do you like to eat protein in the morning or like is a sugary breakfast gonna be a problem? How does that feel to your body if you have protein? And um, you know, a coziness to the home, you know, putting down roots, you know, staying in a place for a little while. Um, you don't have to have your life marked by introverted sensing, you know, ENFPs are incredibly changeable, which is really their strength. So I don't want to take that away from them or tell them to change or whatever. For the vast majority of the time, lean into those possibilities, that enthusiasm, that imagination. Um, 
but just make sure that it doesn't become a prison because what can happen with NE is if you pursue so many possibilities, if some of those aren't all quality possibilities, like I think of an example, um, I know one NE user who gambles a lot and that has created some financial problems for him. <clears throat> it was once an exciting possibility, but that now is a financial burden because he's now at a bunch of debt and that's chaining him so he can't get any more possibilities. So what you wanna do is create some stability to launch you into possibilities. You don't need your life to be marked by SI, you know, but you wanna have a stable foundation so you, that you can really chase all those possibilities. A lot of people think my first function and my first function only will get me what my first function wants. So in this case, like possibilities and trying new possibilities will get me a bunch of possibilities. But sometimes chasing possibilities all the time will actually chain you and force you into that closed room you wanna be in. So if you can kind of find a little bit of a, a balance, not 50-50, but, uh, you know, I don't know, 20% SI, 80% NE or something like that, where you can just have a stable enough foundation so that that will actually get you possibilities. Kind of kind of counterintuitive. Create your own little prison 20% of the time so you can be free 80% of the time, as opposed to seeking freedom 100% of the time and that chains you up 100% of the time, if that makes sense. I mean, SI gives you some like long-standing relationships and some projects so that you can actually get the rewards of that labor, like I was saying. You don't wanna just plant seeds, but you know, get the recognition and get the rewards for the things that you've done. Um, so I think ENFPs are an incredible type. I love ENFPs, my sister's an ENFP. Um, and I think that the real skills with ENFPs is this um, enthusiasm for the new, coupled with this deep individualism and idealism to the point where they can do something that's truly unique that's never been done before. You know, they've got this individualism, this non-traditional, uh, creative, new possibilities, and all of these words combined from any and FI make an incredibly creative individual who will really push the bounds of things that haven't been done before. You know, I'm thinking of an example, you know, like, art that has a really deep and inspiring message to people or music that has a really deep inspiring message to people um, or really just the joy of life. I think ENFPs really inspire people to enjoy life with some childlike wonder that, you know, when you're a child, you know, things are so new and it's very exciting. And I think at some point people feel like they've learned all there is to know and there's nothing new under the sun and it's all just kind of boring. And then it, you know, gets really life sucking. But I think ENFPs tell people, no, there's new all around. You can, you know, the bounds of life are just what, what the bounds of your imagination are. So if you're bored with life, it's really just you've had some boredom in your imagination. Um, and try new things and go new places. You know, if something is getting stale, spice it up. And I think that ENFPs uh, revive a childlike wonder within all of us. And so they're an incredibly important part of the population. I think all of the 16 personalities have something to offer the world. It's kind of counterintuitive because they're viewing uh, life as a prison. Uh, the known as a prison, the known things. It's a closed room they need let out of. Um, but kind of paradoxically, they're showing us that life is not a prison, that life is free. It's an open door that you can, you know, open the door at any time. And so they're inspiring enthusiasm in all of us, which I think is so amazing. So if you want to check in the description box, I'll have a playlist for all the 16 personality types. If you want to see all the videos I have on ENFPs, that'll be in the description box, um, as well as I'll have those cognitive function videos for the deep dives and all of those cognitive functions. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye.